Hey YouTube, this is Spooky47 coming at you with another crypto and NFT video. In this video, we're going to discuss how you analyze an NFT project, how to know when it's time to buy, when to sell, and what the health of the project is. So I'm going to use an example of a recent project that I got into. If you look back a couple videos, I dropped some alpha on this before it minted uh, or while it was minting. And the project did end up minting out. Uh, the mint price was 0.17. The public mint was 0.22, and they ran into a little bit of trouble selling out at that point. Uh, there was also some issues with people that were whitelisted, not able to get theirs at that 0.17, so they did reopen that to the whitelist holders. So the project then ended up minting out, and we're just going to look through this, and I'm going to show you things that I look for when I'm considering in a project, especially if it's already minted. Um, you know, the analysis of a, of a pre-mint, is a little bit different and i'll probably do a separate video on that so be sure to hit that subscribe button but for this i just want to talk about projects that are already out there how do you decide well is this something i want to jump in on so the floor price is, has been pretty healthy for this project i think it's bolstered by the fact that in this particular one the people that minted were given a guarantee an eth back guarantee for six months that if they want a refund on what they minted they can get their 0.17 ETH back. So I think that's going to be very healthy for the floor price on this one. Now, the first thing you should look at anytime you come to a project is this description area on OpenSea. I want to see a good description. I think they did a good job with this one. I also want to see a link to the project because for whatever reason, a lot of projects don't put that there. And if you just came across them on OpenSea, you're going to be very confused as where you go to find more information. So here, this takes us to their website. And what you'll want to do when you're looking at a project is look for their roadmap. Every project has one. And some might have more substantial white papers. And that's something I, I kind of like to see. With this one, I didn't really see that as much, but their roadmap was very detailed. Some roadmaps aren't necessarily that detailed. You'll also see their social links. So if we go ahead and click into their Twitter, we can see they've got just under 23,000 followers. So that is a pretty good uh, metric to see. You wanna see some engagement on posts as well. Decent amount of retweets and likes. They've been doing Twitter spaces. In fact, they're doing one right now. They've practically been doing them constantly since the project launched. So that's great for engagement. And you just wanna go back through the timeline and, and just see. How many people are engaging with these? How many comments are there? Because that's going to tell you a little bit about the excitement for the project. If you go to a project's Twitter page and it's dead, well, that's not a good sign. And maybe a project you want to avoid, especially if it's been around for a while. Uh, on a newer project, you know, that could be forgiving. Another thing to look at is who do you follow um, that also follows this project as well? That's another thing I look at, especially as you have more people uh, on your friends list on Twitter that you follow and trust. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Spooky47Crypto. Feel free to hit me up there. Um, so in addition to looking at their website, let's go back to OpenSea. Now, one of the metrics that I do not like on this project right now is the fact that they have a 10,000 set, but only 2,000 owners. Now, why am I concerned about that? I want to see more buy-in with a diverse, or a diverse number of wallets. So if we look at some other projects, let's look at some, some really blue chip projects. VFriends, for instance, the original. If we go to VFriends, we can see they have roughly a 10,000 item set and they have 5.2 thousand owners. So it's basically a two to one ratio. If we went and looked at Azuki, which is another very popular one, what do we see? Two to one ratio. Go to MFers, another popular one. What do we got? Even a little bit better than a two to one ratio. So that is a little concerning to me. However, the project only launched a couple days ago. So I wouldn't be overly, overly concerned about that. Another metric to look at is total volume. So, and, and by the way, this is a way to make sure that you don't fall for a scam collection. If there isn't significant volume on a project, it, it probably means that it's a scam of some sort. So bear that in mind. 
The other thing is when you are looking at different projects, always look for their official links. And Twitter is the best place to go to make sure you know you're getting it from the right people. They'll usually have official links like they do here, a link tree type thing. And they give you links to their main website, OpenSea, and looks rare. So that's something to bear in mind as well. Um, so what we can do is click the total volume. We can take a look at the sales action here. So where are we trending? Well, uh, it's been a pretty stable floor from the looks of it. And it seems to be trending up. So that's a good sign in terms of the price action. Uh, we can take a look at individual sales. And we're seeing that it's not just floor purchases. It, it seems that people are digging a little bit into the rarities and, and paying for some higher price ones, even though they can get something on the floor a bit cheaper. Uh, I'd say that's also a good sign. Now, if you want to see, well, who are these people that are buying it? If you weren't already aware of this on OpenSea, you can click in and take a look at somebody's Ethereum wallet. And that is the beautiful, uh, beautiful thing about the blockchain is the transparency that you can see. Okay, well, what other stuff is this guy into? Um, so lazy, lazy cubs. I'm assuming that's probably connected to the lazy lions. I know from just being in their Discord. Yeah, there's a lazy lion. Um, from being in their Discord, a lot of people from that community came over there. Big cats. I remember this project. I didn't get involved in it, but I thought the art was pretty cool. And take note of the the different volume on some of these projects. So, like Big Cats Air 2.5. Lazy Lines was pretty popular back when it first launched. You can see almost uh, 30,000 ETH in volume, which is just absolutely wild. So this project has a long way to go before it gets to 30,000. Uh, but 287, again, pretty respectable. So those are all things that I would look at. Uh, when I'm considering whether I'm going to buy a, buy a project. Uh, and let's just take a look at how the floor is looking right now. So I can tell you from looking earlier, there were some, there were some NFTs on the floor as low as, uh, I think, 0.22 thereabouts, and that didn't last long. So people have been coming in and buying. Um, you know, other things you can think about with it is, okay, who's the team? So in this one, and I covered this in the video where, where I had dropped alpha, on this the other day. Uh, let's see if we can find the team here on their website. So all these guys are doxxed. Sometimes that's not the case. And that's not to say it, this is a great argument in NFTs. There have been some awesome projects that did not have doxxed founders. I mean, one of my favorite ones is Wolf Game NFT, and I have no idea who the quote unquote shepherd is, um, but the project is doing well. It's just, unfortunately, a lot of projects over the last few months have ended up being rugs. So if you don't know who the founders and the developers are, you know, you have to take that as a potential red flag in consideration of everything else. Um, so in this case, I, I'm not too familiar with these two gentlemen. I haven't really dug into their LinkedIn, but you could do that. But the reason I got into the project was this gentleman, Manny Coates, who is very big in the e-commerce space. And that's kind of where... I come from, so you know from from the network of people that I'm involved with, uh, he has a very good reputation, and for that I was I was comfortable jumping into this along with their money back guarantee. I've never seen that in an NFT project. That was that was really wild. So you know you, you take all these things into consideration. You say okay, what competitive advantages they have? Well, I know that this guy is well connected. I know that this. This Ethereum money back guarantee is unprecedented. Um, so would I be a buyer of more here? Potentially, potentially. Um, at the same time, you know, it's never wrong to take profits. You never want to be overexposed on a single project. So, you know, in, in, in this case, if you minted at 0.17, there's nothing wrong with taking some profits and, and walking away. Um, and you know, keeping limited exposure. That's why I always say, if you're gonna mint something or get into even a project that's already been minted, it's nice to get a few. That way you have the option to sell a couple, to take some profits, lock it in, and then just keep a couple to, uh, uh, to stay involved in the project. So something else you'll wanna do to be involved with these projects is look at Discord. 
If you're going to be in NFTs, Discord and Twitter are pretty much mandatory. So if you're not already familiar with those, you should get familiar. On the screen here, I have the Bulls and Apes Discord. Right off the top, first thing I'm going to look at is, okay, how many people do they have? This Discord has 17,000 members. So that's pretty good. If I was looking at a project and there was only 500 people in it, that would be concerning. Uh, the other thing, you can find official links usually on their Discord. Most projects will have that. Um, along with some other things, a sales bot is a nice feature. Some of these projects have where they'll show you the sales as they're happening. So you can monitor that and then just drop into their general and the activity I can tell you in this is just all day long scrolling back here a little bit. People are very excited showing off their bulls like that. That's a good sign to see an active community. If you go in and the discord's dead, there's a good chance the project is probably dead too. Um, and you know, one of the things to keep in mind is like, if you look on the, the right hand side, these yellow, uh, screen names, like engage with those folks and ask them questions. I mean, read the white paper and the roadmap first. So you're not asking questions that should already be, have obvious answers to you. Um, but I would say engage with them and just get a sense for what their attitudes are like, what the community is like where they see the project going, and that, that can give you some more information that might not be obvious just from looking at OpenSea or just looking at the website. So I know there's a lot of NFT buyers, especially now as more people are hopping into it that don't engage on Discord. I think that's a mistake. You should really consider um, getting involved on there. And, and that for that reason, try not to get into, don't get into so many projects that you can't monitor what's going on. That's the same thing with, with uh, stock trading. A lot of people will have these big portfolios where even whether you're a trader or buy and hold, either one really, you need to do your homework every week. I'm not a huge Jim Cramer fan anymore, but I always liked his line of uh, hold and homework was, was kind of the advice that he gave people. So getting onto the Discord can give you a lot of extra information about a project. One other tactic I would point out for deciding whether to buy or sell a project is to use uh, Google Trends. And you can see up at the top, trends.google.com. Just come here and you could pop in a project name. So I put in vFriends. And this, and I have this set for, for the last 12 months. This gives you a sense of where the momentum is going. So if we look back, you know, Gary V launched this back in spring of 2021. The NFT market really started to blow up as we got into the fall. And you can see from Google Trends, that kind of reflects that, that there started to be more search volume and interest. And then, of course, we peaked basically at the, the end of 2021 into 2022. And demand kind of fell off. And then you see this other spike. Well, why was there a huge spike? Well, because Gary put on VCon, which was, as far as I know, actually, I don't know if it's the biggest NFT conference or not because nft new york is coming up and it looks like a lot of people are excited about that but this is a good way to just gauge interest over time realize no matter what nft project you're getting into that it's also um the the success of it will be reflected by the overall nft and crypto market so like if we pop in nfts right now let's see what we get search interest over time well kind of mimics what we saw with vfriends doesn't it that there wasn't much interest in terms of search volume. But then as we got into the fall, everybody in the grandma was getting into NFTs. Interest peaked and then we fell off a cliff as crypto has kind of gone into a bear market. I mean, even I have no idea how this is going to work, but let's see Bitcoin. See, the search volume on that's pretty steady. Uh, so I, I don't know that I could really gauge interest there. What if we did buy crypto as a search term? Okay, now this is a this is a better example. So if we look back again to 2021, yeah, nobody was interested, nobody's interested, nobody's interested. Up, oh, started to go up. Uh, Bitcoin hit its all time highs in November, by the way. Look at that spike. And then, you know, as the market actually that was October. Um you know, as the market started to cool off, so did the search volume. So this is, again, kind of a more like macro level way to do analysis, but I would recommend checking out Google Trends. 
Now, let's say you're involved in a project that has a token. So you're in an NFT pro or you're considering an NFT project that has its own so token. So I'm going to use Wolf Game as an example. I'm going to search the Wool token. And this is a crypto, an Ethereum cryptocurrency that is associated with the NFT project. So it's not the NFT itself, but it, this is like the in-game currency. So the, the demand for both of those, I think, will kind of work in tandem. So if we wanted to judge the, the health of Wolfgang, I'm going to show you the chart. Um, so this is when the token launched. It was really quiet in December. And then basically, as it got towards around Christmas time, interest really spiked. And this thing ended up going up to 50 cents. And then again, you know, with the rest of the market, down it came. So that doesn't look great, but, you know, that, that reflects the overall environment of what crypto was doing, right? But something I noticed in doing the video that I filmed um, just before this one was the holders, so what I found interesting was if I looked back at three month chart of the number of addresses that held it, we had a significant jump in mid April. And, you know, what's been going on with with Wolfgang for the the last uh, couple months, three months uh, is something called alpha game. Right. Where everybody's competing against each other. It's this interim game. I cover it in the, the Wolf Game NFT series that I did. You can see that on my YouTube channel. I have a whole playlist for that. But um, you can see that the wallet address really jumped up a bit. I mean, several hundred at least. So that might be a way to to look at, you know, okay, well, is, is the mo momentum going up or is it going down? If we really want to get uh, in depth with it, you know, we go and take a look at a, at a full chart of it. And I did a video a while back on how to analyze the, the wolf token specifically. So I'm not going to rehash how to add these moving averages and stuff. I will put a link in the description though, if anybody wants to check that out, if you don't know how to, um, if you don't know how to do that. So that blue line though is 50 day moving average, kind of our long-term indicator. And then the red line is the nine day the yellow is the 20. So what you can see from here is that the 9 and the 20 have crossed over the 50. Now, today's price action has it dropping below, so that's not a great sign. However, if we see that continue, the 9 and the 20 day moving up, then the data that I get from that is that it's bullish for the coin, which is one way to play it. You know, not everybody can afford uh, a Wolf Game NFT. I mean, if we go take a look at it right now, um, let's see, do I have an open C link here still somewhere? Let's pop over to open C. I'm just going to go and take a look at Wolf game. Another thing that you can analyze, it's really helpful when a project is verified. Uh, if it's not, you know, that increases the chances of scam collections and whatnot, but it just, you know, gives it more credibility that they've been through the verification process. They met the, they met the volume requirements, uh, quite a bit of volume on, on Wolf Game, you can see. Now, this is actually really good. So I'm going to go off on a tangent here. So you see how there's only 500 owners and you're like, spooky, I thought you said, uh, thought you said that um, we want to see a two to one ratio. Yes, we generally do. However, this is because most of them are state. So that's why that number shows is so low. When you stake an NFT, it leaves your wallet and goes to the staking contract. So if you ever see an absurdly low type number like that, look into the project a little bit more. It could be because of staking. Uh, and I feel like they used to mention that in the description. They kind of rehashed this description, so I'm not sure that they do. No, I'm not seeing it. But it's good when a project sometimes puts that in so that people don't ignore it. I think at this point, enough people know about Wolf Game that they don't need to. Um, so if we take a look here, you know, point, point 0.8 is the floor. So that's quite a bit of money to come up with. It's almost $1,500. So if you can't afford to, you know, buy an NFT within a project, but you feel bullish about it, well, you can certainly get into it for just about six cents. And assuming that the project does well, well, maybe you end up making your profits on the fact that 
the coin goes back to to its all time highs. I mean, you know, from here that's that's um, a multiple of like five, six, seven potentially. So that's one way to play an NFT project without having to have the exposure of the NFT itself. But again, not every NFT project has a coin, and and even if they do, not all of them are tradable. So that's something you have to look into before you get involved, obviously. So kind of sum these points up. I know I jumped around quite a bit, but there's so many different things that I look at when I'm considering an NFT project. But here's a summary. You know, you start with the, the OpenSea listing. You take a look at that. Is the description good? Do they have links to their website and social media? How is that item to holder ratio? Remember, I'm looking for two to one or better. You know, I mean, if it's a 10,000 set and there's 7,000 holders, it's even better. Uh, if something gets expensive enough, that's probably where it's going to end up going in many cases. Uh, you know, look at that sales volume. If it's a new project, you know, you can you can forgive them that they don't have 30,000 uh, 30, Ethereum in, in sales because obviously if they were only around for a week, they wouldn't be there yet. But you want to see that trending up. Uh, likewise, you want to see like a good amount of buying and selling. You want to see how many have been sold in the last hour, how many in the last day. And again, if you just dig into OpenSea, you can take a look at all that as well as take a look at some of the wallets of the people that are buying them. Are they the people buying them in other good projects? Because, uh, you know, that that could be a good sign in itself. And finally, is the price of the project, the floor price, is it trending or the average price? That's what it's going to show you on OpenSea. Is it trending up or is it trending down? Uh, the trend is your friend until the end is what they say in trading. So if it's trending down, then there's a good chance it's going to continue to trend down unless there's some other catalyst that that you could see, which is going to reverse that trend. So after that, you want to look at their social, look at their Twitter. Do they have a healthy follower account? Do they have engagement in the form of likes, retweets, and comments? Keep in mind, people have fake followers on Twitter. So um, I would look into those comments. Are they generic comments? Are they from accounts that don't have a profile picture? Because people can manipulate Twitter in ways to make, make their account look like it's more popular than it is. So don't don't just look at it from a superficial level, like really dig into it and see what people are saying on those comments and who those accounts are that are liking or retweeting it. And finally, you can just pop the name of the search, uh, the name of the project into the Twitter search function and see who's talking about it. That's another good way to s just get an idea of what the sentiment is. Like if you do that with Wolf Game, you're going to see a ton of people, including myself, talking about Wolf Game every day, all the time, because we're obsessed with it. And any NFT project you're involved in, you want to see some some of that. You want to see obsession. You want to see raving fans, as they say in, in the business world, because that, that really is going to tell you what the staying power of a project is going to be, especially when we're in a bear market like we are currently. Uh, you could also take a look at Discord, see how many people are in there, see how many people are talking. I would go in there, you know, maybe different times of the day as well, especially if a project, if you're in Europe, and you come to an American project, well, there's a good chance that a lot of people are sleeping and nobody's talking about it. Uh, there's some projects that are a little bit more international, Wolf Game being one of them, and it's busy all the time. Uh, you know, what's the vibe in there? Are people bearish? Are they bullish? I, I wouldn't buy too much into people that are fudding the project, FUD meaning fear, uncertainty, and doubt, um, because I've seen that. Sometimes where it's competing projects come in purposely to do that, or it's just people have a lousy attitude because the floor is temporary, the floor price is temporarily down. Um, so this is why you have to look at over a period of time and ask questions and talk to people, and then you'll get a better feeling about it. And then finally, is there a tradable crypto coin involved in it? You know, not every NFT project has that. In fact, most don't. But if they do, I think that's another uh, piece of data that you can look at and uh, help you determine what the health of the project is. And just some closing thoughts on this, you know, don't spend what you can't afford to lose. Um, that That is, I think, the biggest mistake that people make in NFTs. Uh, hold on. Let's flip this around. Sorry about that, guys. 
Uh, don't don't spend what you can't afford to lose. People make that mistake all the time, and then that results in them doing what the third bullet says, which is panic selling. And that is never a good way to, you know, invest for the long term or even as a short term trade. Like if you if you're trading emotionally, you're going to make bad decisions. Um, have a budget and stick to it. You know, and and maybe maybe you do that as a monthly type thing. You know, you get your paycheck and you say, all right, well. 200 bucks is going to ETH this month, this month. And it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to spend it that month. You could, you could kind of stack it and then get into a more expensive project that you're interested in. Um, or it could be that, Hey, my plan is to buy one NFT every month. You know, maybe that's the way you want to do it. Um, but also don't panic buy. So people talk about panic selling all the time. They call people paper hands, etc. Uh, but I think sometimes people panic buy because they think that uh, a project's going to the moon. It's, you know, it's going to 10x from here, 1,000x from here. Everybody's cheerleading it on Twitter and Discord. And that fear of missing out is real. So don't fall victim to that either. Keep the emotions out of this and you will have a much better time. Uh, and I think it's helpful to decide beforehand, is this going to be a project that you're going to flip or is it a project that you want to hold for the long term? Like, for instance, I'm in V Friends. Gary Vaynerchuk is not going anywhere. His project will survive. I, I believe his project will survive no matter what happens to the NFT uh, space as a whole. So I don't worry about that. I'm not like the floor on V Friends 2 right now has dipped substantially. I have no concern whatsoever because I know that long term that project is going to do amazing because of who runs it. And that is Gary V himself. So, you know, if there's nothing wrong with being a trader, uh, if, if you get whitelist for something and you can make a quick 50% or a hundred percent profit, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, so don't, don't fall victim to the people in discord who are saying, Oh, you know, don't, if you paper hand, uh, you're wrong. You need diamond hands, all this other nonsense. You are never wrong taking profits. However, you should decide beforehand, is the project one that you're going to flip or is it going to be one that you're going to hold? And if you decide that ahead of time, it makes the decision a lot easier. And finally, you know, buy multiple NFTs if you can. That way you don't have to choose between getting out completely. Like if you buy three of them and the project really starts taking off, well, sell one and that might pay for all three. And at this point, you know, the two that you, that you keep that you don't sell, well, you're, you're writing this for free now. So who cares what happens to the floor price after that? Uh, so that's another strategy you could potentially use. So that's going to wrap up this video guys. Um, thanks for watching. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll be doing more content as time goes on. This is still fairly a new channel. Uh, even though I've been in the, the crypto space since 2015 and the NFT space now for about a year. Uh, let me know in the comments what questions you have. If it's something that I feel like you could do a good video on, I will definitely do that uh, because I'm here to help. I, I love crypto. I love NFTs. And I want to see everybody succeed. I think that the period from 2024 to 2026 is going to make more millionaires than we've ever seen before. Uh, for the things that crypto, NFT, and, and the overall metaverse concept are going to do in those years. So uh, I want to be a part of it and, and help as many people as I can. And lastly, if you're on Twitter, which you should be, if you're going to be trading NFTs, follow me at Spooky47Crypto and say hello. Um, and that's it. Thanks for watching the video. Take care, guys.